Welcome to the PC Gaming Week Spot, your recap of the last seven days in PC video gaming. My name is Colm O'Hearn, and joining me this week, this man represents billions of fans across the globe and 99 European trophies. We have come together at this critical moment, enabling European games journalism to be transformed, putting the industry we love on a sustainable footing for the long term future. Yes, of course, joining me this week is Mr. Matthew Castle. I'm not splitting off for the money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthew, I am going to try and remain uh, uh, upbeat, just uh, and awake, I suppose, because I was up quite late last night trying to figure out what this European Super League thing was because they announced it at, I don't know, was it 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock? Like it became official very late in the day. And I find that the announcements you're most proud of, you tend to do at midnight. <laughs> um, but, you know, it would be foolish of us to, to really dissect everything about it because uh, I'm sure a lot will change. It mightn't even happen, Matthew. They've been talking about this for 20 feckin' years. But I was wondering if we could play a little game. H have you done much reading up on this? Do you know? No, not really. I'm not really a football head. Well, that's that's why that's why I was asking. So I was wondering if we could play a very quick game and see if you could guess the twelve clubs that have been confirmed as founding members of the European Super League. Because I think you could give it a good go. Like, could yeah. you could you get the English clubs? There's there's six English clubs. Uh, well, I saw some fuss yesterday about Arsenal and Manchester United, so definitely those two. Tick, tick. Um, probably uh, Liverpool. Yeah. Look at this. Um, Chelsea. Yes. Um, who are the <laughs> other good ones? Is Manchester City still good? Manchester City still good and a founding member of the European Super League, yeah. Oh. Well done. Uh, are they? Wait, they're not all from the UK, though. No, the six, six English, three Italian, and three Spanish. Give me, give me an Italian. Give me one Italian, one Spanish, and then you win the money. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. <laughs> name an Italian <laughs> football club. Any, any Italian football. Uh, club. M Milan. Yeah, I'll give it to you, AC Milan. Well AC done. Milan. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, no, ba Barcelona. And Barcelona, congratulations! You've just won. And I guess won. the last English team's pro it's got to be Norwich. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah, without a doubt, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so that'll be an exciting thing story to follow over the coming days. But uh, I suppose we, you know, we should, probably should talk about games as well. Uh, yeah, probably. We but, should probably talk about something we know about, or at least I know about. <laughs> but before we get on to the bigger stories of the week, Matthew, grab that news crank of yours and open that gob, because I have some information snacks for you. Nom, 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 Info nom, snacks nom, 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 for his gob. <sighs> Not many, though. It's, uh, yeah, I... I mean, we do have some bigger news stories. is prepped for disappointment. <laughs> uh, so the first little information snack I have for you is that Nintendo had their latest indie direct, indie world, whatever it's called, last week. And a lot of it doesn't matter to us because either they were old PC games, like, I don't know, FaZe is coming to the Switch and all that. Um, but there were two games that stood out to me, and that was, firstly, Ali Ali World which is the Ali Ali, the skateboarding game, but now it's, I think, open world. The art style has changed. There are, uh, you have interactions with characters. There is dialogue. Uh, and Oxenfree 2, Lost Signals, which... Ollie Ollie Oxenfree. Excellent. Excellent, Matthew. Um, uh, that's not original. I saw that in a tweet. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, Oxenfree 2, which... All they showed it was th that was their end. Finally, at uh, at the end of it, which I think mm. a lot of people were thinking, is it going to be Hollow Knight Silk Song? It wasn't. It was Oxen Free. Uh, good surprise, but yeah, don't know much about it. Looks yeah. very similar to the first one. Well, I'm, I'm glad right. I wasn't I wasn't crazy about that uh, 
drinking game in hell one that they did after party uh, yeah yeah uh, I, th- yeah. I thought that missed the, that missed the mark a little bit for me, so I can understand the desire to go back to like classic, uh, you know, if it ain't broke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I I thought After Party was all right, uh, but Ox- Oxenfree is uh, Night School, the developer. That's their that's their height so far. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to to both of those. Really, uh, we're also starting to get those lovely E three media briefing announcements. Hooray! Um, so Ubisoft have said that they're doing a Ubisoft Forward, which is their their branding for their thing, on Saturday, June twelfth at eight pm our time, which is standard really for them, isn't it? They normally do the Saturday. Um. So. <laughs> Sure. Uh, a bit more exciting and in the immediate uh, timeline now uh, is Epic's Meta Human Creator is out, which is the development tool that allows you to create photorealistic, super hyper realistic uh, human faces. I haven't got a chance to play with it yet. I don't know if you have. I, I, I haven't toyed with it yet, but I think it. Um, I saw some little bits and bobs about it online and. They're pretty good faces. If they you are... like character credit, they should they should get that in Creator Wrestler. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, but the the thing about this is like, yeah, it's a development tool, but I suppose they're just allowing whomever to 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 sign yeah. up and to play around wonder, with this. I wonder if they will actually reach a point with, um, you know, if if you have this level of kind of photorealism embedded in your character creator in your game, do you actually run into? potential legal problems because oh. people can create such accurate versions of real life people like you know That's, yeah 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 i, 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 I know I it's think user that. made but like if you stick tom cruise in dragon age and it is you know uh, you know a perfect likeness of tom cruise and then you start putting those videos on youtube does that create some kind of dilemma like do, are, do companies have to kind of have a certain uh, level of kind of inbuilt kind of shitness <laughs> to avoid this from happening. Because like already, like I, I, I was sick of Dragon Age Inquisition. Like I, I remember watching some clips of that where like people have put Game of Thrones, you know, like Amelia Clark into mm-hmm. it, and it just looked like she was in it. It was amazing, like absolutely amazing. Even with like a character created from like whatever six, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's an you know, it's a digital is it a digital ethics thing? A digital Who ethics knows? dilemma. Yeah, maybe. I I think that's an interesting interesting question to ask. But, like, uh, and Tom you know. Cru- Tom Cruise is, I suppose, the relevant one because of those deep fakes from yeah, a couple I of weeks think ago. Tom Cruise, because that's what everyone does. Yeah, like you say with the like, like he. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, interesting. We'll see where this, uh, where where that's, this that's thing the goes. weak spot. Asks the big questions, has Doesn't none answer. of the big answers. No, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and EA has announced F1 2021. Uh, this is the first game that they will be releasing after acquiring Codemasters. It's coming out on July 16th, and brilliantly, it has a story mode called Yes Breaking Point. Give that's it good. to me now. Give it to me now. That's the only reason I wanted to mention this story is because I love the name. Uh, but those are your information snacks this week. No, no. Yeah, you'll probably have helmets and loot boxes or some bullshit. V- uh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Endear us to the, uh, to the audience. Um, but yeah, now it's time to talk about the bigger news stories of this week in headlines and hot takes. <laughs> I'm Hugh Edwards. Working in news is exciting. Headlines and hot takes is the part of the PC Gaming Week spot where we take you through the bigger news stories of the past week. And there's kind of one, really, or all of the the little tidbits revolve around one particular video game. And that is Resident Evil Village. And there she is, the big vampire woman (laughs) again. Um, So, yeah, uh, this was... I don't know if they've announced this yet, but I'm guessing it was probably the last Resident Evil showcase direct thing before the game mm. comes out in early May. 
make sense uh, happened last Thursday. A, a lot in it. Uh, we got uh, another kind of two minute story trailer showcasing all the characters, blah, blah, blah. But the biggest thing from this was probably the fact that Mercenaries mode is coming back, Matthew. Mm. Har- hooray, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Um. So this was in the original Resident Evil 3 through 6, but it wasn't in 7. Maybe mm-hmm. because I suppose 7 was the first first-person one? I don't know. Mm. But uh, Mercenaries, for those that don't know, is a it's kind of arcade mode of Resident Evil, isn't it, Matthew? Where you have to... I suppose is it kind of like zombies in Call of Duty? Like you, you have to kill a number of enemies. Yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of a, it's a sort of time attack thing. So you know there there are ways of extending your limited time to kill as many zombies and get high scores. Um, but you can kind of stretch it out further, and it becomes more intense as it goes on. So I, I like it. It's quite a distinct thing. It's it's not quite a horde mode. Um, you know, it has its own kind of rhythm. It's you know. The time element, I think, makes it, a, you know, a bit more distinct. Yeah. Uh, they've added a few additions in this mercenary. So there's a shop you can access in between areas that allows you to either buy guns, ammo, um, first aid stuff, or you can also upgrade the guns that you already have. Uh, there are also things called abilities with a capital A, which again, I believe they were talking about it as if it was new. And these... Our standard stuff, you know, get to shotgun master, shotguns do more damage, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I get a little muddled because there was in Resident Evil Revelations, there was a, I want to say it was maybe called Raid Mode. I can't quite remember, it's been a while, but they had a, a, not Mercenaries, but it had its own multiplayer mode, which had like quite a big perk system. Um, So I don't think that perk system has been in Mercenaries before. Okay. But I may, like I say, it's been a while since I've played the two distinct things. Um, um, do we know if this is going to be co-op? They haven't said, I believe, and all we saw were like... Yeah, because I would say the, co- the co-opness is, is kind of quite key to mercenaries. Mm, yeah, I, I don't believe they have said that yet. And just kind of painted it as this time attack mode, kind of solo time attack mode. So I, 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 yeah, I, don't I mean, know. it's fun by yourself, but it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good like time waster with a mate. Um, well, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I, I was going to ask before we talk about any of the other Resident Evil stuff. Is this something you're looking forward to? Like, fair enough, maybe it's not what you come to Resident Evil for, but I mean, I, well, I would say it's, it's like, you know, of all the bonus extras there's ever been in Resident Evil, it's, it's, it's probably my favourite. I'm not going to say I'm like a huge mercenaries addict or a big mercenaries head, but I, you know, I, I've got friends who have played this for like, who played mercenaries in Resi 5 for like hundreds of hours. You know, they were super into it. It's a, you know, it, it has big fans. It carries a lot of weight as a name, so I can understand when they announce it. Also, as much as I like Resident Evil 7, I always felt it was a little slim in terms of like, you know, it had the campaign and then, you know, Resident Evil games traditionally do have quite a nice suite of extra modes and bonuses. And in Resident Evil 7, they came more as two DLC packages. And then I wouldn't say any of them like massively landed. You know, I wouldn't say any of them were, you know, perfect, you know, exactly what people were looking for. So, you know, just as an all round thing, the idea that you get this big campaign and then you get mercenaries to play. Um, I'd be even more impressed if it was co-op. I get the feeling from the footage that it isn't going to be, um, which would be a shame because, like I say, it's just a it's a good, it's it's a nice fun exercise to have two people in that little space. You know, it's just a, just a, a, a throwaway silly thing is always more fun with more people. Um, so yeah, like I'm glad they're doing it. Um, will it be good? Let's wait and see. It's. Yeah, but even if it is just single player, it is sort of, to me, kind of looking on, it seems like it's cushioned the blow of our reverse, reverse, whatever you want to say, because that didn't come up at all during the showcase, did it? I don't believe. Well, they mentioned that they, they'd had the beta, which I thought they had shut down because it was like yeah. busted. Yeah. But so- maybe I wasn't following that story closely enough. 
But so they hmm. did sort of gloss over reverse sin in in this. They were just like, oh, and there's that. Bye. <laughs> uh, I'm much more interested in like a mercenaries mode than a multiplayer, you know, player versus player thing. And that's that's never really been the strength of it. And nothing they've made that has been like mercenaries has been as good as mercenaries. Like the 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 kind of the asymmetric one in Resident Evil Three, where you had the players versus the master genius or mastermind or whatever it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That that never really landed for me, but you know, it could be great. It could be bad. I thought the idea <laughs> was all right, but I thought the execution was kind of mm. Mm, a bit wishy washy. Yeah, like most series, you've got a really solid foundations. Like, but you know, when it works, it works brilliantly. Question is, does it work in this one? Let's let's wait and see. Uh, so, uh, other little bits and pieces they announced. Uh, we're getting a demo. Um, on PC, it is coming. Uh, when is it coming, Matthew? It's coming on early May. It's already out on PC or sorry, on PlayStation Five. No, the first what the Village demo is. Yes, yeah, it's being split up into two. So on PC, uh, you are going to get to play an hour of Resident Evil Village, and you have access to two different areas: the Village area, the Castle area. And Mm -hmm. on PlayStation 5, what they have done is they've split that hour up into two half hours, one in the village and one in the castle, I believe. Isn't that right? They have like... Yeah, I think that's the general idea of it. So you have played the the first demo that's... (laughs) The incredibly confusing eight hours in Resident Evil demo, which is actually 30 minutes. Half an hour, yeah. (laughs) Why have they called it? Why have because they? Ca- you have to play it in an eight-hour window, but you play thirty minutes. I'd call it the thirty-minute demo. <laughs> personally, it, it, yeah, the the messaging is a little bit muddled. Um, but what? Uh, yeah, what, what what did you think of it? I know it's only a half an hour, so how, what what yeah, can you so do in the, a half an this, hour? This footage is the. Uh, this is from PlayStation Five. Um, just to sort of set it up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also turned the ray tracing off because on PlayStation 5, it's meant to be 60 frames without ray tracing. Weirdly, 45 frames with it. And I thought, you know what, let's just, let's just try and keep it smooth. 45, so that's a weird frame rate. But I don't know what to make of that. Um, yeah, so I played this demo. I, admittedly, the half an hour limit kind of meant I didn't really play it in a particularly sophisticated way. Like, I felt like I was kind of like pooning around the area quite fast just trying to get my bearings. I missed loads of stuff. Having looked at um, online walkthroughs, there are like weapons you can get and crafting materials to get into the crafting system. I don't think I got enough of that um, to to ever dig into that. Um, So uh, yeah, like feeling wise, it it handles much like Resident Evil 7, you know, the same kind of sense of movement, the kind of weight of the character. Um, The area is a bit more open. You know, you're in this kind of graveyard and push out. Um, My big takeaway was, I thought the act, it's not very scary. (laughs) I will say that. Um, But I don't know if that's because of the half an hour limit. Yeah, I mean that. Because you don't really get into the mood. I'm not, I wasn't playing this as I would naturally play it. You know, I was just kind of, you know, just trying to make stuff happen so it would look good in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know if that just eliminated any sense of fear. Um, There's only a very small pocket of action in it. Like there's a field that you're about to see here uh, where you fight lichens who are the wolf men. And I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, I was very, very bad at aiming with the controller. And for some reason, the character kept crouching. I've got a very oversensitive... uh, right analog stick on my PlayStation 5 controller. Hmm. It clicks in very easily. So if if I suddenly crouch and start shooting him in the knees, that's why. Um, (laughs) I I actually actually thought this little pocket of action was not great. Um, Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is this, uh, from your understanding of how it was, you know, you press start and you come in, you blah, blah, like... I don't know, where, where is this in the game? Like, are we starting from the very beginning and like, you know... No, you're... It's, in, it's implied something else has happened already. Like, you've had some kind of tutorial, um, you've got some equipment. You know, okay. I, I imagine this, isn't it? 
No, I, I, I mean, the actual demo is fine, but the, this specific action encounter, like, it's, it's very, um, it's more action-y than it is survival horror. It yeah, isn't, yeah, like yeah, a, that's, yeah, it's totally action-y, yeah. It, it isn't a slow motion, it isn't a slow moving enemy. It's not a, oh my God, I've only got these bullets. I mean, these guys absorbed all my bullets, like super, super, fun, you know, and I ran out of bullets quite fast, which then pushed me into knife combat which is terrible. I mean, the knife is only ever a, you know, a, a backup tool in these things. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it has this, they've, they've talked quite a lot and made quite a big deal of like blocking with your hands and stuff, but it isn't a melee system. It's, it's, it's as, it's as basic as it ever was. Um, it's just kind of sky, Skyrim-y, just swipe. Yeah. Kind of just, just weightless, like no reaction to your knife stabs, no gauge of how you're doing. Um, so when you run out of bullets and you resort to the knife, it just becomes quite a drawn out, messy affair, um, which isn't scary. It's just it's just annoying and kind of quite ugly to look at. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, you'll see in a second. I've, 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 um, yeah, I pull out a knife and fight and another guy. This is actually from my second run through. I did it. I, it took me about twenty five minutes to get through it, and then I did. I hop back in to use my remaining five minutes to to do the combat again. Um, yeah, I get stabbed a lot. He still does that dumb thing where he pours a healing potion on his hand <laughs> and his whole body heals, which is dumb. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's just like the werewolves because they're, they're like a lot more ferocious. You know, it hasn't got like the shambling horror of a, a zombie or the villagers in Resi 4, you know, or even like the weird sort of ambiguous sort of meat monsters from Resi 7. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, it didn't feel very, it didn't feel very, in, like, particularly intense to me. Um, I mean, it, it will be interesting to see what the contrast is between this and the, what's the other one called? Ca the castle demo. Like, so, like, how, like, will the castle demo be more slower, more deliberate, more kind of survival horror-y? Then yeah, I and mean, that was the vibe this. I got from the first demo, which was set in like the castle, um, kind of basement. You know, the environment was a bit more like you know, it's dark, it's claustrophobic. You know, I think you can have big outdoor areas that are still scary and intense. This just, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't really land for me as an actual like the nuts and bolts of you know the shooting and this 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 terrible knife. And admittedly, like you know. I was crouching a bit too much, which doesn't make it look great. Um, my other takeaway was like how much of the demo was quite scripted. Um, it had, you know, it's basically a succession of um, sort of cinematic conversations with these sort of, you know, first person actors, which was definitely something they did a lot of in Resident Evil 7. Um, but there it was, you know, I think more about like the intensity of being locked in with the bakers and the bakers were like these really grotesque villains getting like right up in your face. And it kind of made those scenes quite kind of fun from a sort of horror tropey kind of direction. Um, here, like what was happening was just not particularly like, I didn't find it particularly scary or interesting. And so I just, all, all it felt like was I wasn't really playing the demo just felt like a lot of stuff was happening to me and I was watching a lot of stuff and I didn't really have a lot of say. Um, mm. And it's all beautifully made, you know, the animations and, you know, you know, visually it feels like a step up from seven and, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, nicely done in that sense. It has that slightly kind of um, hokey dialogue as well. Like it's, it's, it's still quite B movie ish, which yeah. I think is quite key to like Resident Evil's sort of appeal and charm. I just, I don't know, like, I, I, I felt when, when those sort of, um, when you lean too heavily on those cinematic set pieces, I, I find like it's quite hard to be, to kind of be a horror experience because it feels like you're sort of safe because, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen, you know, based on what, what they've scripted. So there's not a lot, of, there's not a lot of room for your mind to sort of like conjure up terrible things mm -hmm. you know it either works for you or it doesn't um so i was a little surprised surprised by how much of that there was like outside of those fighting those two werewolves i don't really think i 
made any decisions in this demo particularly. That is interesting because when you think, like this isn't the first time Capcom have done a, a time-limited demo. You know, mm. Res, Resi 2 became something like the most downloaded demo of all time or t- in 10 years or something like that when they had it available for however long it was, I can't remember. Mm. Um, and that sort of uh, faux scarcity kind of drummed up um, I don't know, favour for the game and kind of interest in the game, which maybe these demos on PS5 and the one demo on PC will do as well. Um, but I mean, the- it's, it's certainly action-packed. I can understand, like, what you might take away from this is like, wow, if that's how much crazy stuff happens in half an hour, imagine what the whole game's going to be like, which is, is probably the impression they want you to, to have. But, yeah. um, like, there was nothing in there was nothing in here to say, like, oh, this is going to be like escaping from Jack Baker. This, you know, you are going to be preyed on by this, you know, this AI presence in this world. Or here's like a little taste of what Mr. X's deal is in Resident Evil 2 or whatever. You mm-hmm. know, it, it doesn't really, um, it, it's hard to see what, where the, like the, the horror is outside of just the general like chaos of it. Well, <sighs> Because there was, apart from the Resident Evil showcase, we did get Resident Evil news via uh, Game Informer, who revealed their upcoming cover story. It's all around Resident Evil Village. And Mm. in it, uh, they said that Village will have an upgrade system. So now I bring this up as well because of everything you've said. They said that Mm. we'll have an upgrade system. There will be uh, hunting in the game because, like, Village has things... Like rams, pigs, fish, chicken. Uh, I was just, in the video the Game Informer had. They were shooting at fish in um, not a barrel, sadly, but a little pond. Uh, but you can kill all of these, a la Far Cry, and then you take them to the Duke to cook. Uh, but the thing is, they're not for your health. They're that's for like once you consume these meals you'll get permanent upgrades kind of like the abilities right. with the capital a i mentioned for thing but that's like saying resident evil 4 has like an animal system in that you can shoot chickens pick up their eggs and then sell their eggs i don't know you don't you don't think that that's anything sort of revolutionary Not, I mean, for resident I mean, evil could be. I mean, like admittedly none of that's in this demo but that's i mean shoot this thing to get that thing it's not I, it's, I, it's not like a survival experience. You well, know? well, the 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 fact of like getting because the abilities that they showed off were sort of again very actiony focused and like you know with there's an in-game currency called lay, and yeah. enemies will drop it when they die, or you, I think you can just collect it in barrels and objects around the world, and you can again go to the Duke in this, who is who is re- this game's? What are you buying? What are you selling, guy? And mm. you can buy weapon attachments, and it's all you know. Yeah, damage, rate of fire, reload speed, blah blah blah. And it's like this feels. And again, I'm not because I'm not the biggest Resident Evil fan in the world. But if I was, I don't know if I'd be hearing all this, and I would be terribly excited to play Village. Because it doesn't sound like a survival horror. Then it sounds more well, like. No, I mean th- those things. You know, there was there was a big sort of upgrade system in Resident Evil Four, and and that worked fine. I mean, it does feel like, you know, like Resident Evil Four. It's going to be more of an actiony kind of experience, um, which you know, Resident Evil Seven for its first half is actually it's it's quite I'd say quite pure. You know, survival horror. Second half, then it just becomes fucking machine guns. Well, that, that, the second half is—I I, I don't know. I get the feeling like Resident Evil Village is going to be more like the second half of Seven in terms of its like pacing and mm. like tone, and and that's fine. Like you can be a great horror, you can be a great action experience that has like horror elements to it. That's absolutely fine. But it's also harder to stand out in that space. I'd say just because you know. A lot of people make action games. Not many people make incredibly, you know, blockbuster survival horror games. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Seven was interesting because after going down the action route in the third person, you know, after four, five, and six, 
it was interesting to see them go, oh, let's go right back. Let's pull it in. You know, we're going to lock you in with quite a limited thing, quite, you know, quite a small space. But it's going to be super intense. And I think people reacted really well to that. This feels more like the first, a first person version of, of Resi 4, um, but with a lot more scripted stuff than Resi 4 ever had. Um, it's my take after half an hour. I mean, what does that like? The way they talk about the game makes it sound like it's going to be quite substantial. And like, even in this demo, there's a lot of stuff I didn't see in this particular area. Like, I wasn't taking my time. So, you know, Seven wasn't the biggest game. It was quite, you know, like I said, it was quite a small space fundamentally. But um, yeah, you know, I'm still, I'm still interested in it. I just, I just don't get that. But I got the feeling from the trailers as well. Like, I thought, oh, this looks quite like, you know, more like just a, a an action game. Uh, than seven did but you know maybe it'll have some intense stuff because i think seven is genuinely scary like you know oh yeah the first half i think it's open yeah. i think it's opening stretch is actually pretty intense and like <laughs> really well done. yeah yeah uh, and i hope there is still that that like side of of this team in this game because either you know it's it's a good thing and not enough people do it and you know we've talked about this before there's so much horror at the moment is like clever psychological horror, which is a code word for not at all scary, you know. Um, and that sucks, you know. It's nice that someone's still going, no, I, I think I can Monsters, make you be, yeah. be really scared of a virtual monster. That's mm-hmm. what I want. Um, yeah, uh, I, just from listening to you and seeing what they've shown off so far, I would be a little concerned that they're going to go down the second half of Resident Evil 7 like go down yeah. that route like too much, but I don't know. We will indeed see this. So yeah, this was the village demo. The castle demo is out. Is that out on PS5 next week or something? Is it? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll capture that on PS5 and we can help share some updated thoughts. Um, so yeah, PC players, again, you'll get to play that from one o'clock in the morning on the 2nd of May to one o'clock in the morning on the 3rd of May, which in fact isn't eight hours and is 24 hours. Well, that's the, yeah, the, so, the, the demo that everyone gets is a 24, 24 hour hour hours. 24 yeah. hours, yeah. And the PlayStation that's is 24 eight. hours in Resident Evil Village, which is actually an hour in Resident Evil Village. <laughs> um, hmm, yeah, interesting. Uh, <laughs> in other news, now this could be very quick we could get through this because your opinion might be very similar to mine and if it is then so be it but Matthew everyone has a bloody opinion on Mass Effect's new graphics um yeah what, what what's yours <laughs> uh oh I always say this on this I'm so boring when it comes to these these things so I'm like oh I need to play it for myself and see um like I've seen the memes, I've seen the pictures, the side by side comparisons where people are like, the original has way more atmosphere. And in some of the shots, I think, yeah, you're right. In other shots, I think the new version looks better. Um, wow, how's this for fence sitting? Like I, because um, I, I think uh, on the whole, I think the new one looks better. I think it's very hard to to say otherwise. Really, like maybe I lighting like. I think the argument is that you can sort of that there's less subtlety in the new version because it's like look at the details you know the lighting's been pumped up a bit so it's kind of like you can really see everything and the argument is there are points in the game where actually like you know the the you know not being able to see it all as clearly you know it had a more atmospheric vibe you know the it, it, it shouldn't just be about you know showing off all these mad textures you know there's there's artistry beyond resolution that's maybe being lost but um like, like yeah no and I, I i totally get that especially with say a game like uh what was the recent one that people were kicking off about that didn't come to pc demon souls like i remember when that when they showed off that remaster or remake or whatever it was on PlayStation, the trailer that came out. And it was sort of like uh, people were kicking off because it was, oh, it's killing the atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. I think they, I mean, all those people probably bought it when it came out. But 
is I, I sort of get it more with that. Whereas with this, for the most part, I'm like, well, if they made it look better, I don't know. I just, maybe I'm on an island, but I just think the new one, 99% of the time, looks better. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just sort of generally, you know, excited that they're doing it. I'm more interested in the, and I don't think they've talked about them specifically, but the kind of the, you know, mechanical tweaks to bring one more in line with two and three, because two and three are just like nicer action experiences. Mm. Um, I think that would that would outweigh any things. I mean, at the same time, I'm not so much of a sort of uh, you know Mass Effect obsessive that such a thing can you know really register to me. You know, I don't you know I don't replay it. I you know I imagine as happens with so many remasters is that I play them and in my head I'm like, oh yeah, this is kind of what it looked like anyway. Exactly. You know, yeah. because yeah. of my little rose tinted version. You know. I, it, that this scenario where things are happening side by side only happens in trailers. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a, a bit of a bugbear I have with like, like visual breakdown culture online in general, which is like, sure, if you put them side by side and you pause it and you zoom in, mm-hmm. you can show X, Y, Z, but mm-hmm. I don't ever see these things when I'm playing it. You know, I just, yeah. it's just not how my brain's tuned. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's great. I think, I know, think, rather than, oh, actually, let me, let me get my second monitor up. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I think your your average person on the street is like that. Like they don't. You know. This but, is the, uh, this is the only time they'll ever see a side by side comparison. Yeah, and like if you haven't put, if you, if you just showed me the remastered shots of this, I would have told you that's pretty much kind of what it looked like. But you know, it's fun to dunk on stuff, isn't it? People love us. People love us. People are like, oh man, yeah, I'll get a good dunk in here. Yeah. People like Duncan. People like Mass Effect. Mass Effect dunks. That's a good that's equation. Top, that's top tier, yeah. That's, that's social media success. Like, that is close. There's no point me dunking on like obscure Scandinavian detective shows on buried on Netflix. No one watches. No one cares. No matter how good or well observed the dunk, mm. um, you just you go where the people are and then you get get a Duncan. It's it's not about the quality of the dunk itself. It's about the <laughs> size donkey. of the donkey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but you know, in classic fashion, we'll finish off that part by saying, "We'll see when it comes out." Uh, but so- <laughs> something else—that's the catchphrase of the week spot. Something else that weak can spot more like weak sauce. <laughs> something else that can see is this vile, disgusting creature. Because what's that coming up ahead? Oh, it's a right angle. It is time for Tech Corner. Matthew, look at this disgusting eye. Look. Oh, okay. <laughs> look at this vile, vile eye. What? It's so, a webcam that's designed to look like an eye. So a man called Mark Tessier, Tessier, uh recently spoke to IGN and him, along with a little team, they made this webcam that looks like a human eye. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. There's no deviancy. There's nothing. Uh, he's not a voyeur. Well, I'll be in charge of that. <laughs> this is. It was a prototype that they made in a sort of a black mirror type of like, where can technology go? Ooh, or all that thing that we all we all ate up about ten years ago, and I think we're all tired of now. Mm. But Mark said. To IGN, he said, webcams are in front of us, looking at us constantly. We are familiar with the human eye and a webcam and a human eye share a purpose. They see. But in contrast to the webcam, the human eye is expressive. Human eyes can express happiness, anger, boredom or fatigue. The four emotions. I believe that if every device's working state and functions were explicit, it would be it would be better for end users and privacy issues would be highlighted. And he went on to say, I don't plan to sell iCam as a product. It is a speculative design object made to reflect on our relationship with webcams and sensing devices. So, you know, he's just he's just making a point. He's basically saying, like, if you had a webcam that like rolled its eyes whenever you were about to do a bad take. Like the world would be a better place. Or just had a really shocked. (laughs) Or just say, like. You wouldn't you wouldn't do any naughty stuff in front of your PC <laughs> because you wouldn't want another human eye watching yeah, you do it. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, quite. <laughs> it does cry. <laughs> Just cries a single tear because it's making you, you're making it watch just terrible things. <laughs> oh, terrible, terrible things. So, Matthew, it my, looks like something out of a David Cronenberg film. I th- I think it is. I think they should sell this. Um, my question to you, Matthew, is if they saw this, would you buy it? No, I don't want a human eye. Like judging you, yeah. I get enough disappointed looks from my wife as it is. I don't want my computer also being like. Oh, you again with this bullshit. <laughs> uh, so those are your new stories for this week. So now it's time to tell you and each other about the games we've been playing in Show and Tell. Show and Tell, Show and Tell. We can't afford a proper jingle. Jingle. It's meant to be jingle. Yes, Show and Tell is part of the Peace Gaming Week spot where we tell you and each other, indeed, about the games that we have been playing over the past week. And Matthew Castle, you have been playing a video game and sort of revisiting your your childhood, I suppose. When did the original game come out? Which That was childhood. Oh, like, I want to say like 2001. Let's have a look. I think that would constitute your childhood. I'm going to say, yeah. Your, your yeah, child was... I was definitely a teenager when he came uh, out. 1999. Ooh. Oh, ooh. boy. Uh, ooh, that's... Yeah, this is... Uh, hmm. Yeah, and this is a remaster, isn't it? They haven't remade it. This is Shadow Man remastered. Yeah, this is a remaster by um, Night Dive, who did the remasters of other games from this sort of era. They did uh, Turret... Um, uh, they, but they're not like remakes. They're kind of quite... Their their whole sort of spiel is quite sort of um, the whole shtick rather is is quite true to the um, sticking quite true to the source material. Um, you know, it's just quite a nice sort of HD remaster, bringing it up to kind of modern standards. Maybe like changing the controls a bit. Um, with Shadow Man, they've also reinstated some kind of cut content from the original game that they found in the files. So there's a couple oh. of areas which are sort of new to the game. And they got, I think they got the original composer in to do some, um, you know, make some new music and, and finish those areas. So there is actually new stuff in this as well, which is, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, for those not familiar with Shadow Man, uh, you are Shadow Man, who is a comic book character. Uh, and you're Mike Leroy, 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 Roy, Mike Leroy. I think his name is. <laughs> Said with um, such confidence, yeah. Uh, and... But when you kind of go into this sort of uh, the kind of the sort of soul world, which is called Dark Side, you are Shadow Man, who is this sort of superhero with various sort of demon busting powers. Um, so it's kind of got this interesting kind of uh, sort of light world, dark world kind of sort of flip mechanic where you kind of jump between the two. Um, it's quite a, a, in my head. I always I always remembered this from playing it many, many years ago as being kind of like Zelda-like. Uh, and playing it now, I think it's like maybe a bit more like obviously Metroid-y um, in terms of it's quite a sprawling world. You're relatively free to sort of explore as you want. Um, your progress is governed by like a few upgrades, which is where like the Metroid stuff comes from. Like you have to get the ability to... Uh, be able to touch like hot surfaces so you can push these like magma rocks and mm. you later get the ability to kind of walk in lava and things like that, which which then you can backtrack and go into new areas. Um, you're also collecting Dark Souls. This is a long time before Dark Souls was something <laughs> else. Um, so don't roll your eyes because I'm bringing up Dark Souls, um, which level up uh, your sort of, I don't even know what it's called, your general like, you know, Shadow Man level which dictates these kind of big fleshy doors that you can open, which are these big round doors you can see here. Um, so the more of these Dark Souls you've got, like the deeper you can kind of push into the world. Uh, so, you know, there's there's a lot of exploration, sort of backtracking, which is where I kind of get the metroid vibe from. Um, I will say, like, because it was made in 1999, like, it's not all... It, 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 it doesn't really hold your hand in a way that a lot of games didn't back then. You know, it's quite a vast world and you are kind of left to kind of deal with it and kind of decipher it, even trying to work out at times like what your basic objective is. You know, there are story, there are like cutscenes, which, you know, when you hit a cutscene, you're like, okay, I'm going in the right direction. 
and there are kind of uh, you hear these sort of calls from your your uh, deceased. I think it's your brother rather than your son, but you you hear these voices, so they kind of guide you towards where you're meant to be going. Um, but it's also like impressively open ended and and kind of allows you to really get lost. Um, unless it's buried somewhere incredibly deep in the game, uh, there isn't a map <laughs> in the game, um, so you have to remember quite this tangled uh environment um uh handy like uh you can find uh, you know because it did come out in 1999 there are like maps of it from right. the original release which people have made um like but it's uh, while while 1999 matthew might have et up the idea of like you know don't hold my hand no map well, How, what do you think of it now games were like so you didn't well, yeah, think like but what bad would it- um it's. It, I imagine it'll be quite. It can. It'll probably be quite a um, quite jarring for people now coming to it. Like, you know, it's something that you know, my kind of rough take on this is. While they've done a really nice job to make it as like, you know, friendly and playable as uh, you know, especially from a controls perspective. You know, there's a lot of stuff baked into it, which is quite like older thinking and. Um, slightly frustrating. Like there's still a fair amount of jankiness in the platforming. I mean, the fact that you have to kind of like put your guns away before you jump at ledges to grip onto them and things like that. Oh, there's okay. like a lot of little kind of like in the same way you used to get with like old Tomb Raider. There's a lot of like extra faff that you just have to like deal with. And after a couple of hours, like most of that faff is kind of clicked into place and you know what you're doing. So it's fine. Um, but mm. yeah, it like, I think if you went in completely blind, you'd be a bit like, you know, ah, this is this, this is quite old fashioned. Um, but it has a, it has a real charm to it, uh, and I don't think that's just nostalgia because I don't think I'd never finished it back in the day because it was also equally janky and quite hard, and uh, I think I just got lost and gave up on it in the end. Um, but you know. There's something quite fun about like digging through the world. Like it's it's got this. There's a lot of kind of collectibles to 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 find. A lot of like secret hidey holes. It's still quite fun to excavate that. Um, it's whole kind of in my head. This was quite edge lordy, but I don't think it is as edge lordy as 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 all that really. You know, this this sort of voodoo tinge kind of law is quite fun. All the villains are sort of the you know that you're fundamentally trying to go after are like based on serial killers. Um, real serial killers, not real serial killers, but they're kind of like some of their. Like if you read their mo's, they're kind of like oh, okay. sort of proxies for like you know. You're like, oh, that sounds a bit like you know Ed Gain or whatever. Okay. Um. Okay. So, but that isn't as prominent. You know, it's it's more just sort of like quite a gothic, confusing labyrinth to explore, rather than you know, a, like a grotesque horror experience. Um, this was noticeable back in the day because it was notable back in the day because it was on N64 and, you know, at a time where it didn't really have much in the way of like violent sort of mature games. So anything with this kind of horror flavor, um, you know, was, it sort of stood out a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you can, looking at it, you can see that it's quite old, you know, and sort of how angular it is. And there's a lot of like weird corridors and sort of like, you know, not very like organic or natural feeling kind of geometry. <laughs> um, but they've added some like really lovely lighting effects. You know, it's all very sharp. Um, I don't really remember how it controlled back in the day. Cause like I said, I haven't played it in over 20 years. Um, so, but in my head, like the new controls make it a bit easier. Like to, to my mind, like I was making much faster progress. Um, you know, a lot of it's the sort of, it's like strafing back and right, dodging quite slow projectiles while you feel people full of shadow bullets. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's it's an interesting thing. You know, if you played the original, it's, it's kind of interesting to go back to it and see how it adds up. I think it's uh, like, you know, it was relatively well thought of back then. Mm-hmm. Um, a big sort of third person kind of exploring platforming adventure you know, then there are loads of them. You know, it's 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 quite. You know, I, I often I am often surprised at how few sort of um, 
sort of Zelda or sort of for, you know, 3D kind of Metroid likes we actually get, you know, like outside of maybe Darksiders, it's quite hard to name a series which has gone down this sort of direction. Um, so it's still quite novel in terms of in terms of that, you know, it's definitely not like a, oh Christ, this is a like an ancient game and it has no value now. Um, you just Plus, have to approach it with a bit of an open mind. Be very liberal with your save points as well, because if you die, the checkpointing is absolutely rotten. Um, and you can die quite fast if, if you just turn the corner and there's just like shitloads of enemies. Um, but yeah, I like it's it's very um lovingly treated. Um, it's shown a lot of respect by by the you know uh, the uh, by Night Dive. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm in, I'm into this. I'm in, I'm actually like enjoying this way more than I thought I was going to. Um, yeah, it's, it sounds it. It sounds like you kind of wise you fond memories of it. You kind of weren't expecting loads coming into this. Kind of anticipating, you know, it's a twenty year old game, but it's good to hear that you're you're enjoying it. It's yeah, good. it's good. It's just yeah, it's just like a nice job. Like it's not, you know, it changed how it looks, but it kind of maintains its original style while looking about as good as it could with that style. Yeah, which I think is like their studio mo, which is which is perfectly respectable way of treating something. Um, yeah, it's 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 nice. It's decent. Good, good. Uh, I have been playing a game that is also nice and decent, uh, but for a like nice and decent in a different way, like nice and decent in a, in quite a more wholesome way, I suppose. I've been playing a game called Rain on Your Parade, where you play as a cloud and you rain Ooh. on people and things and objects. And that's it, really. Oh, um, the story set up is you're a cloud and you're trying to get to Seattle because Seattle is painted as... I don't know, the land of milk and honey for clouds. Right. And it makes sense. Uh, there's something like 50 odd levels in this and each level will have a number of different objectives. Some of them main objectives that you need to complete in order to get past the level. There are side objectives too. And the cool thing about this game, like, look, it's not a world beater. It isn't going to, I don't know, maybe in a couple of months time, if you play this, you might, forget you've even played it but it's really enjoyable like it's really kind of light-hearted and fun um he says whilst the footage on screen shows him setting fire to everything in the oil cloud in the thing the thing about this cloud is that it can soak up all other different liquids so it's you don't just rain on things you can soak up oil and you can set fires to objects or people or whatever in the area it's classic oil rain behavior you can soak up like um paints and you can paint a lovely picture of your podcast co-host just all these different liquids whatever it is and it changes then how you interact with the objects within the the area. And I mean, it's not only that, you know, you just have different levels. Like there's a level, uh, an homage, a first person shooter homage to Doom. There's a Metal Gear Solid one that's kind of stealth based. It's enjoyable. And they, and they sort of even introduce new mechanics as well as uh, on top of the things that you can excrete from the cloud. Nice. You'll gain the ability to, to uh, snow on things, to... To a lightning, a thunder twister type of thing. And it's just kind of a lot of fun, you know? Uh, like, and even the art style as well. Like, it's, it's, it's all very appealing, all very colourful, kind of nice, fanciful, silly. Hmm. So it's on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, oh, for, of course for, it is. For Class- PC. This is classic Game Pass fair. It is probably about two hours to finish it. Yeah. And I think you'll have a very good time within the, those two hours uh, sometimes sometimes you're just in the mood for like a let's arse around with some sort of fun fun kind of physical humor and kind of uh yeah physics stuff it's it got a bit, bit of like donut county vibes it is to- yeah total donut co- county vibes like because you're yeah. you're whilst you will have main objectives like uh for example in a restaurant, you have to fill up pe- uh, 10 wine glasses or something like that uh, with kind of 
Oh, some Metal hot, Gear? Some hot, yeah, there's Metal Gear if you're watching now. Uh, but yeah. like, yeah, it'll be fill up wine glasses with like some dirty liquid or whatever. And then you find, you either go to the toilet or there's a mop and bucket. Uh, but like, oh, and you, you know, you go around to the, all the wine glasses, you fill them up, so on and so forth. There are these sort of directed objectives, but at the same time, most levels just boil down to fuck the place up. Nice. Um, <laughs> and, and it is, it's quite fun, you know? It is quite enjoyable. And even again, if you're watching this, uh, I love the bowling. The bowling was yeah. terrific. <laughs> if you're not watching this, you're probably like, what the hell are they watching? <laughs> the podcast listeners are like, wait, Metal Gear? Bowling? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it, it, standard Xbox Game Pass fair. Uh, good fun. Light-hearted fun for all the family. Uh, classic stuff. I suppose if I was to make uh, a few criticisms... Um, Go on. Like, the, I mean, it does try, like, yeah, I mentioned the story and about going to Seattle and whatever else. It tries for humour at times and tries to be a little bit meta and sort of game, there's even a few sort of video game culture stuff. Once, once I hear that stuff, I'm out. I hate that shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, like it, it's not too intrusive. It's fine. Bad news. You got to collect five pieces of bullshit, and you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. W- once I hear that stuff, I'm, I'm whatever. Yeah. But, it's it's that's death. Absolute death. But but yeah, it, it's not too intrusive, and it allows you to get back to just soaking everyone, and you know, being a bastard cloud again. And it is, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's short, but again, perfect for Xbox Game Pass. Um, this is, it, it, the service was made for games like this. So if you have that and you have kids and you're looking for something to play with them, I would mm. recommend this. I think it, it is quite the enjoyable way to spend two hours or so. And you get to the, all the faces of my cloud. Again, if you're watching this, I drew all them. There's a little thing in this game where you can draw draw the, the faces of the clouds. So you can have, have good fun with that as well. Um, again, is yeah, pure fun for all the family game. It's good. It's good. Uh, so that is Rain on Your Parade. Matthew, a Mm-mm. game that... Another game you have played, which I get the impression isn't quite as, you know, family friendly. I don't know. Well, no, really. there's, nothing, oh, there's nothing in this one to to make it. It's not not too edgy. Uh, this is the Dark Side Detective, a fumble in the dark, uh, which is the sequel to the Dark Side Detective. This is the. Uh, are you familiar with this series, Cullen? Uh, not terribly, to be honest. So I describe it as like micro point and click adventures. In that, it's a point and click game. You go around collecting objects, combining objects into weird items, using those weird items to solve puzzles. You can talk to characters. Um, but rather than be this massive sprawling game, it's split into like smaller cases. Um, you work, you're this Detective McQueen, and so each each level is a different case you're working on. And they tend to limit you to like a single location. Um, so, you know, you'll never, you know... They're rarely kind of more than like a handful of rooms. So it's quite a small space, but you basically go through the entire kind of like arc of a of a bigger point and click adventure, like within these like individual levels, right. um, which works really, really well. Like it's it, it what it does is it like trims a lot of the flab from point and click games. Like you know each of these scenes, like you can't move the characters. For example, they come in, they stand still, you just click on stuff. There's there's not like a movement element. You know it's. It's very fast moving because of this. You just sort of switch between the different scenes. Um, everything's very sort of static and clear in this kind of big, chunky style. So it doesn't really feel like you're ever pixel hunting. Like it's quite obvious what all the interactive elements are. It plays very fair. Um, the dialogue, you know, it's funny, but it doesn't outstay its welcome. Like when you talk to people, they tend to say something, you know, in a couple of lines and then kind of get the hell out of there. Um, you know, it means some of, you know, in, in the original game, at least, a lot of the cases meant you could do them in like half an hour or whatever, because that, that's kind of the length it felt like it was going for. But, you know, what I liked about it was uh, that it kind of ticks, it ticks a lot of point and click boxes, but just does it in a really like fast, clear, like efficient way. Um, this is the sequel, and 
it's uh, I haven't finished it. Um, I've done the first three cases. Um, I would say they feel a little bigger and a little bit more ambitious. Um, so like too the first big? case, which hmm? too too big. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Like it's it's quite a fine line. But like the first case in this, you know, you end up being able to like move around the city and go to locations which are all like a couple of screens in themselves. And, you know, it, it feels like, oh, okay, this is, this is like bigger ambition and scope. Um, what I liked about it was actually, I think it still adhered to the kind of sort of fairness of the first game. I think it was still really clear what you're meant to be doing. Like there's enough like clues in the description of what characters say that you don't get massively stumped. Um, you know, it has a bit more sprawl to it, but I wouldn't say it's so much so that it becomes like unworkable. Um, and then in the second case, it kind of goes back to being a single location again, but it's quite big location and there's, there's, there's a fair amount you're doing there. So, you know, it's kind of classic sequel work in that it feels a little larger, um, but hasn't lost what makes it distinct, you know, hasn't lost its sort of brevity and its sense of humor and its fairness, which is really, really key. Um, what I really, really like about, about this series, and I won't pretend like I'm, I'm like, you know, I was an early adopter. Like I played the first one because I knew the second one was coming out. Um, so I played it last week thinking, oh, I should probably play this. Um, and uh, what I really like about it is that, you know, well, a, I really love point and click adventures. You know, I loved them growing up. The LucasArts stuff, absolute gold. You know, some of my, some of my favorite games, my like formative gaming years. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of, you know, there still are a lot of like dabbling going on in the space and there are modern point and click adventures and people have kind of kind of kept the genre alive. But I often I think people often get like the humor of, of it wrong because the LucasArts games in particular were very funny and people feel that, you know, humor is is like an ingredient of point and click games. Yeah. But where what this what often happens is you need a character who says something funny about everything and has like something funny or witty to say about every object, every interaction. And they become a bit of like a bore in the process because you end up with someone who's like normally very sarcastic and snarky and is just sort of like spitting out all these kind of withering one liners. And it's quite it's quite tedious. Um, what I like about this is it doesn't really it doesn't fall into that trap. Um, the central character, you know, he's, he's pretty straight. Like what he says is funny, but it's 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 not too complicated. It's more like. The, the sort of weirdness of the scenarios is where a lot of the humor comes from. Like there's some really nice big character work in this. Um, you have your, your partner always with a sidekick. And so there's a lot of interaction between you two, which is, which is very warm, which kind of keeps the kind of, you know, you don't just feel like this lone asshole going around being vaguely unpleasant, which a lot of point and click games, like mm. I would, they kind of have that vibe. Um, you know, it's just like, two pals trying to solve mysteries, which I really, really like. And also because they are quite streamlined, nothing can outstay its welcome. You know, it, it, it really does feel like it's, it's just designed to deliver the, like the very best bits of the genre. Um, yeah. I think this is like, I'm kind of, I'm, I, 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 I'm sort of annoyed at myself. I didn't get into the first one sooner. Uh, Cause I think this is, a, these are a, a really great pair of games. Um, this sequel doesn't seem to have like messed up the magic of it. Um, like uh, you could buy it as a big bundle on steam as well together. Like, I think it's like a, I don't know, 12 quid or something for the two of them, you know? Um, yeah, it's great. It's like a really, really good thing. Like, a, you know, if, if you like point and click games, but uh, you know, do get worn down by some of the tropes and cliches, this avoids them. Um, I mean, yeah, if you like, don't like point and click games, this is a great place to place. Or if you've never played one, this is a good place to start because, like I say, it's so kind of focused and there's so little kind of guff around it. It really just lets you focus on, you know, the puzzles, the character, the humor. It's brilliantly done. Yeah, I know. I, I certainly get bogged down a little bit by all the kind of MacGyvering. Uh, and I mean, it's still a fair amount of that, but it's like. I'd say it's quite fair. And even if you do hit a dead end, like you've never really got more than whatever, like five things you inventory. It's not like I've got 30, 30 bits right. of bullshit and you're just combining all of them to see what works, which, you know, does happen in these things. It's, yeah. Uh, it's pretty clear, like, you know, so far in the second one, I haven't hit any, any like major sticking points or dead ends. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's really good. Good. Another game that I have played over the past week. Similar, I suppose. Would you call it a detective game? Sort of. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be as hot on this as you are on the Dark Side Detective, though, sadly. Uh, And that game is Don't Forget Me, which is coming out today, I believe. Right. I was interested in this one. It's the sort of diving into people's memories, right? Yeah, I was interested in it as well because it is uh, developed by a developer called The Moon Pirates and they have cited The Red Strings Club and Her Story as two inspirations. And, I mean, yeah, I I see it. I I see The Red Strings Club in terms of, uh, a little bit in terms of the story set up and obviously the art style and her story a bit in how you interact in one element of the game, which I'll get on to, but I don't think it reaches the heights of either of those games because it takes far too long to get going and then it ends very, very quickly. It's quite quite a short game, about two, I don't know, two and a half, three hours or so. But yes, right. there, are, there are, I'm going to say two different ways you sort of interact with this game. The one, one way is the horror story way, which is where you dive into people's memories and you enter words uh, into this program. And what you're trying to do is to link a starting word that you find in their memory, uh, which if for those watching, they can see jacket is the starting memory and hive mind was the end memory. Uh, right. And you have to try and link those together by finding words in this person's head um right but but the thing is right there's kind of very little art to it because if you find so they're called bubbles and if you find one bubble that is jacket for example and in it it says uh matthew loved his jacket uh it was a, a lovely red jacket and then you search red so then you find you're you're basically just trying to find a word within that box of text. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it sort of becomes a bit artless when you enter in four words and none of them work, and you're like, "What's going on here?" And then you just start typing any word that's in it. It's not about trying to find related words or anything like that. And I understand that probably would have been more difficult, but. It just, mm. yeah, it becomes a little bit tedious, I suppose. It's not like you're ever going to be spending loads of time in, in there, in that section of the game. But yeah, it just becomes a little bit tedious. The other aspect of the way, or the, the other kind of way you interact with this game is through cause symbiosis in the game. But it's basically where you dive into somebody's mind, but you can walk around a memory of theirs and pick up items and... All that. Uh, Again, it's like you were talking about the Dark Side Detective and that being a stripped back adventure game. I think maybe this is slightly too stripped back as it were. Like it is, it feels quite authored. You're just walking around, picking up things. Like you don't have an inventory. You don't have... Right. Uh, I don't know. You 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 interact with an item and you the character goes, "Yes, that is the correct item." <laughs> sort of. I was I'm just a bit disappointed. It had all the makings of something quite quite decent, quite interesting. That's a shame. I I I like the look of it and the style of it. I'm what's the actual like the world and the setting of it? Do you dig it? Ah, it's just kind of standard cyberpunky, f- futuristic fare, really, isn't it? Everyone in this world has a chip in their head, and everyone has a chip in their head. I don't want to spoil it in case you do end up playing it. But <clears throat> you, as this character called Fran, befriend this man called Bernard. Uh, Bernard is a copyist, and that means he copies the memories of people when they, they come into his little workshop and they ask for the memory to be copied. Yeah, that's the kind of setup, and then it goes into, ooh, are they going to delete memories and blah, blah, blah. Story setup is all right. The characterization is okay. It's all pretty average uh, mm. and disappointing at parts, even. Um, so, yeah, over, overall, a bit disappointing is uh, 
is uh, the Dark Side Detective I was going to say. Don't forget me. The Dark Side Detective, Matthew said, is quite good. So, yeah, if you're looking for some sort of detective <laughs> game, maybe have a look at that. Uh, but those are the games that we've been playing over the last weeks. So now it's time to test the knowledge of one another in a video in a video game. God, I am tired. In a game we like to call Mystery Steam Reviews. <laughs> At last. Mystery Steam Reviews, the part of the PC Gaming Week spot, where I, Colin Mahern, and he, Matthew Castle, test the knowledge of one another with Steam Reviews that are a mystery. And the rules are as follows. Both I and Matthew bring three Steam Reviews to the MSO Arena, but we omit the name of the game associated with each review. Our opponents must correctly guess the game attached to each review. One correct answer equals one point. While both of us have 90 seconds on each Mystery Steam Review, we also both have help in the form of three lifelines. These lifelines can be used at any stage during battle and also pause in the 90 second timer. Each lifeline, however, can only be used once and once only. And they are... As follows. Question, where the hot seat haver gets to ask a yes or no question. Second opinion, where a second review is given to the warm chair sitter. And a genre, where the genre of the game is revealed to the one with the warm arse. And indeed, it's getting hot, hot, hot in here because this week's Mystery Steam Reviews, the theme of it, you chose it, lovely viewers and listeners. The theme is... Games on Metacritic that have a score of 90 or above. So, the... the, the, the to- well, well, not totally opposite, but like quite the opposite to what we did a couple of weeks ago when we did 60 and lower. So, yeah. It's quite a limited pool of games. Uh, yeah, I thought there would be more um, when I was looking. like 50 or something. Um, so... You know. Have you remembered them all? That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we will find out. Because there were so few, I thought, like, you know, any of them were doable, really. So maybe I've gone relatively obscure. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, Matthew, let's see how obscure I've gone. Here is your very first, very first, this week, Mystery Steam Review. Imagine Assassin's Creed with Assassin's Creed Combat but with a protagonist's name, skin, and worse story. And instead of a big, beautiful city, you have a small island with some buildings and long corridors. The sequel is much better. And that's from Ricardo. Ricardo doesn't recommend it. Uh, And Ricardo played it for 10.3 hours. Matthew, your time starts now. Interesting. Imagine Assassin's Creed with Assassin's Creed combat. So, well, it's not Assassin's Creed. That much we can say. So it's a game. It's a third-person stealth or action game with with the protagonist with a character's skin and worse story. It's not a big city. You have a small island with some buildings, right? So, so open worldy, but not not open world enough. But still good. Interesting picking a negative review of a game with the with the meta score of 90 or above. That has thrown me. <laughs> because I now I'm thinking of bad games, but it's not. These are g- widely held critically to be good games. Critically acclaimed, yeah. Yeah, critically acclaimed. This could be this could be Batman Arkham City. I think because an island like you play in a bit of Gotham City it's open world but it's not a huge open world the sequel is more open world um a bit unfair to say Batman has Assassin's Creed combat but we could be dealing with an idiot um I don't really have a better suggestion so I'm gonna say Batman Arkham City is that your final answer that's my final answer. So, didn't opt to use any of your lifelines, kind of broke it down. This person said it's like Assassin's Creed, but bad essentially. You're not in a big city, you're on a small island with corridors. The corridors bit is also a bit 
I don't really know how that's Batman, but maybe it isn't. You have ended up on, and it said as well, the sequel was better. You've ended up on Batman Arkham City. And Matthew, I can tell you that the correct answer is... Batman Arkham Asylum. Oh, wait. Is that a, sp- a small island? That's an island. That's on an island, yeah. Arkham is City- it an island? Arkham I City's thought it was on a peninsula. <laughs> Matthew, could I have my first Mystery Steam review, please? You will make China look like a nature reserve compared to the smog you'll be belching out. Ten out of ten would destroy the planet again. Says death. <laughs> they recommend this with 39 hours on record, but only 18.5 at the time of review. Interesting. Time starts to know. You make China look like a nature preserve compared to the smog you'll be belching out. So, okay then. That means city builder um, construction. So, hang on. What games, when I was looking up games to choose for Mystery Steam reviews, what games did I see? Uh, city builder or some kind of thing like that. <sighs> Smog. I mean, I don't know. See, I do Ah, like a city skylines or a Sim City or a. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I do. I remember seeing Factorio. Factor, yeah, Factorio. That's that would be one of them, isn't it? You've all the conveyor. I, I don't know much about it, but I know you've a lot of conveyor belts and stuff like that. Um, see, I'm afraid now. If I use my second opinion, I could be going too deep and wasting a second opinion when I'm going to be wrong on this anyway. So I think I'm going to take a punt. And I'm going to say Factorio. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer, Chris. So, you heard the word smog, and you thought city builder. You didn't think of, say, the pollution from a car. Were you right to make that link? The correct answer is... Factorio. Yes! <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Very, very well thought out. Uh, Matthew, you, your second mystery steam review is up. as follows. Now, this is a big one, so I will oh, allow you to soak not it. Not another negative review. <laughs> I will allow you to soak it in, okay? So, this game is the most overrated game ever. The gameplay is very shallow and it feels like a slog. The gunplay is average at best, and the powers you get are very underwhelming. The story is nonsense, and you can tell the writers were trying to do something deep. The companion character, they used their name, the companion character is annoying, ripped straight out of a Disney cartoon. Is the game bad? No, but it is mediocre. It is very mediocre. And that's from J. Cray who isn't cray about this game, not recommended, 10.1 hours on record. Now, I'm going to give you, before I start the timer, because it's very big, do you feel like you've taken in everything? I feel like I've absorbed that, yeah. Okay, all right, so I'm going to start the timer now. I mean, this pushes me in lots of different directions. Can I just get the genre straight off the bat? Uh, You can indeed. So I'm going to pause the timer at 122 as Matthew uses his genre lifeline. So the genre of this game is... As I scroll down, where is it? The genre of this video game is a first-person shooter video game. A first-person shooter video game. I'm going to restart the timer now. That's not very helpful because of most of the games that are 90s on Metacritic on PC are first person shooters, I'd say. That is like the the, the connective tissue. Um, 
The companion thing's driving me nuts because I was thinking I'm going down the Half-Life route. I, I wouldn't describe any of, you know, I wouldn't say you've got a companion through any of them enough that it's like, a, you know, you wouldn't describe Alex as a Disney cartoon. Um, I'm going to have to get my second opinion on this one. Okay, we're going to pause the timer at 50 seconds. I'm, I am stumped. As Matthew uses his second opinion. So the second opinion of this video game. Absolutely magnificent. Has taken the title for my favourite uh, game of all time. Less horror-ish and more story-focused than the other two titles in the series. If you're even considering getting it, stop. Just get it. There isn't a chance in hell you'll regret it. Less horror-ish and more story-focused than the other two titles in the series. Restarting the timer now. It's, I mean, there's like all the Half-Life games are 90s, basically. When this review is written... Could be like half. Life. I wouldn't say. You say they're horrorish half life, horrorish shooters, but with an annoying psychic. It's not Doom. Horrorish first person shooters. Oh my god! I'm gonna kick myself. I know I'm gonna kick myself. It's a, no, it's not Deus Ex. No, it hasn't got Disney like companions. Uh, like the other two parts of the series. Maybe it's talking about Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 2 Episode 1. Half, Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Is that your final answer? Yeah, it's my final answer. I don't think it's right. So, a big review? You took everything in? Powers? I, none of it. I don't know. And... That review was stuffed. It was so stuffed. It, like, it tore my mind asunder. Try to think about the companion. The companion led you to Alex from Half Life, but then you were going, "But she's not. She's not Disney, really." The Unless you're an idiot, which you might be. The second opinion <laughs> then spoke about how this was less horrorish than the previous two games in the series. You were thinking maybe they're kind of splitting Half Life Two, Half Life Episode One, blah blah. Matthew, I can tell you. That the correct answer is Bioshock Infamous. Oh, I'm actually amazed they got a 90 on Metacritic. Did you not? Yeah, it got. I actually have the score. It, I like it, but I thought everyone was down on it. It got um, a ni- 94. Was what it got on Metacritic. Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. Oh, that's a bit unfair on Elizabeth calling her. Di- oh, I guess she's a little bit Disney Dis- princess. Disney princess. Kind of like, yeah. Uh, fair enough. In hindsight, both those reviews are fair. I put my hands up. They weren't written by idiots for once. Uh, Matthew, could I have my second Mystery Steam review, please? The first game, R, is a slog in comparison to the later expansion, but it's really enjoyable in setting up the story in an in-depth manner. The wider story is incredible, with the amount of times I cried during third expansion alone being well into the double digits. This is from Me Mum is Cooler, they recommend it, with 1,389.8 hours on record, but only a paltry 1,351.7 at the time of review. Okay, time starts now. I'll say R is initials. Oh, okay. I thought it was a pile. I was going like Sea of Thieves. No, or- no, no. It's initials. Oh. The first game, ARR. Oh, that's completely throwing me off. It's initials. Uh, really enjoyable in setting up the story in an in depth manner. Oh, right. Because I was ready to dive into like Assassin's Creed and uh, Black Flag and whatever else. Look. Oh, I've that's I'm I'm told I don't know what's happening now. Um, right, well let's pause the timer for fifty five seconds. Matthew, could I have my second opinion, please? The game is beautiful. The story is great. You'll definitely get lost in it. Brings me back to my old eleven days. Uh, okay. Restarting the timer now didn't help me one bit. Eleven. I don't know what that means. 11 what? 
Is 11 written in Roman numerals? Is this a, like first 11? Oh, I've written it as the word 11, but it was, I think it was just 11, 1 1. My old 11 days? Oh, I have no fucking clue what this is. A or R? Oh. I've. I'm just gonna have to try and pick a game that I remember seeing, like Age of Empires 2 or something. Age of Empires 2. <laughs> Genu- is that your final answer? Yep. Yep. So we're thrown by the R. You thought it was a pirate? It's not. It's the initials of a game. This is a game with expansions that brings one player back to their 11 days. If you'd used your genre, I would have told you this is an MMO. An MMO where there has been, there has been an 11th game in the series. This is Final Fantasy 14. I, I Final Fantasy 14. Brings me back to my 11 days. Final Fantasy 11 was also an MMO. Okay. So brings me back to playing Final Fantasy 11. I thought, I thought. Was that unfair? I hadn't a fucking clue what the what what what's A R R? A realm reborn, which is like the initial release of it. Right. Okay. Maybe that one's a bit of a fuck. I don't know. Who knows anymore? Mystery Steam reviews. It's, I must admit it's that was slightly to... designed for you to. I was hoping you were going to ask for the genre. Okay. <laughs> Rather than the I second thought that opinion. might then like put you in the genre space. Was the little narrative I built or at like. When I'm picking these, I often think, oh, if, you know. I'm the same, yeah. That, that clue will unlock it, or that genre will really unlock this one. When he uses this second opinion, he sure is going to get it, and he never also, does. Also, the fact that they played for, like, over a thousand hours, I thought might put you in MMO territory. Matthew, here is your third and final Mystery Steam review. Worst fucking game I have ever played in my entire life. It is so slow, nothing happens. The controls are horrible. <laughs> And it's not even co-op. And, that, and that's from Wobans. It's not uh, recommended. Point two hours on record. And your time starts now. One, and I don't mean this to be salty, but the way that you've picked negative reviews of famously popular games is really quite mean. <laughs> I didn't do that. Anyway, uh, this review is so vague. In their opinion, it's slow. In their opinion, nothing happens. They don't like the controls, whatever they may be. The only solid fact we have about this game is that it doesn't have co-op, which means it could be anything. Um, so I've got to ask a question. I've got to ask a question. Okay, My question I, I, is... Pause the timer 55 seconds, yes. Um, is this a first-person shooter? No. And I okay. will add, because I didn't... Re- it's only when looking back at the review now, I'm like, that is a little bit vague. Um, the controls in this game are quite unique, I will okay. say. And them saying that the controls are bad or whatever it was, and it's not even co-op, are related. I, okay. I'll say that. So I'm going to restart the timer 55 seconds now. Well, that's very that's very decent of you. That makes me think it's uh, a game where you control two people as one person, uh, which makes me think someone would be like, "Oh." I mean, that makes me think Brothers: Tale of Two Sons, but then I don't remember that being in the list. It is people do like it, but I don't know if it was ninety strength. It's not even co-op. I mean, that would describe... I mean, that... From what you said, that feels like the kind of vibe they're going for. I mean, it's also, like, two characters on two sticks. It's not rocket science. So, uh... But, hey, never underestimate how stupid people are who leave Steam reviews. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Is that your final answer? Yes. There's, There's one thing you can trust in this world. 
is the stupidity of the Steam reviewers. So, uh, you kind of recognise that this was maybe a, a little bit of a vague review, um, but you know, not even co-op, what, what's that about? And it was interesting then, you asked a question, you asked whether this was a first-person shooter, um, I'm not sure where, what, where, what kind of avenue you were going down there for co-op first-person shooter. Payday or something, was it? Oh, no, that is co-op. I, I don't, don't know. know. No, well, no, because um, it doesn't have co-op. I was... Yeah. I don't know. I was just trying to... Um, I was flailing. I was flailing, Callum. Um, and you threw me a lifeline. But, but I, I did. I threw you an extra lifeline. Because I was thinking, this is a little vague. I kind of get the review because I know what the game is. Uh, so I... Yeah. I gave you what I gave you, which was like, you know, the controls are a bit unique and related to the co-opness. You said Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. I can tell you, Matthew, that the correct answer is... Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Thank you for being decent with the clue. I appreciate that. Uh, that's no problem. Well, I was... As I say, yeah. Because, uh, it, I mean, the thing is, if I just guessed something else and it was totally wrong without that clue, I would have kicked off about that review. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying... Salt averted. Matthew, could I have my third and final mystery Steam review, please? Yeah. First game I played with multiple endings and choices that affect the story. Also, a good pandemic game. Story hits too close to home in 2020 to 2021. From that one and only, recommend it with 38.4 hours on record. Okay, start time now. Right, so Chesney says it's the first game they played with multiple endings. And choices that affect the story. A good pandemic, but then they say story hits too close to home, implying that... Like, yeah, you saw, yeah, there's a pandemic in this. Now, this makes me think of... Multiple endings and choices that affect the story. Multiple endings and choices that affect the story. So that makes me think of Dishonored from a couple of weeks ago. I think when we were doing Silent Protagonists, pandemic and that. You got some clues. You have... I do have some, actually, yeah. What am I doing? Um... I'm going to pause the timer 50 seconds. Could I have the genre, please, Matthew? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Dishonored has... I don't know if it has, like, loads of different endings, but I'm pretty sure it has at least two different endings. Pandemic game. This is described as an action role-playing game. Action role-playing game. Okay. Uh, I'm going to restart the timer. 50 seconds now. An action role-playing game. The Division? Multiple endings, though. Mm. Um, Doesn't sound like The Division, does it? An action role-playing game. Dishonored could be an action role-playing game. Uh, uh. What's the one that you liked? Divinity. Is that, is that a... Pa is that... Is there a pandemic that's in that? A, that's more of a straight RPG, I'd say. Um, <laughs> very chatty. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to pause the timer 13 seconds. I'm going to ask a question. My classic when I'm just trying to reach for stuff. Uh, Matthew, was this game released in the last f five years? No, it wasn't. Oh, all right then. Uh... Restarting the timer, no. It wasn't released in the last five years. Pandemic, multiple endings. Pandemic. Deus Ex. Is Deus Ex about a pandemic? Ah! Deus Ex. Is that your final answer? Yeah. So, you were thinking for a good pandemic game. A game which has a pandemic in it? That was made more than five years ago. I know, I went from five to like 20. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a jump. Mm. You were thinking Dishonored, which was made in 2012. Oh, shit. <laughs> the correct answer is... Deus Ex! Yes! Get in! <laughs> oh, you beauty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matthew, you took me on an emo emotional roller coaster there. That's, that's, that's the role of the that's the role of the host <laughs> for their round. <laughs> the the 
alternating host. <laughs> oh, for a second there, I was like, Dishonored was? Dishonored was that I, long ago? I wish ago? it was Dishonored. Oh. But it's not, you win fair and square. I actually think, uh, like, we, I think we did pick some slightly different games this time. And I feel like sometimes we circle the same sort of 10 games. Well, like, so, sometimes there are only 10 games to choose, like the week yeah. of the advertising and whatever. It's like, Alan Wake is bound to show up a few times here. Um, but, yeah, no, that was that was enjoyable. And th- excellent uh, reveal there at the, at the end, Matthew. Uh, so that is Mystery Steam Reviews for another week. Now it's time to get on to your correspondence, you lovely people, and indeed your burning questions. <laughs> yes, burning questions is the part of the Pizza Gaming Week spot where indeed we take your correspondence, your burning questions. You can email us at any stage throughout the week weekspot at rockpapershotgun.com and then we'll try and read it out on an upcoming uh, PC Gaming Weekspot podcast. Matthew, we start as we mean to go on, as uh, we do, Mog, the wonderful, brilliant, intelligent, beautiful Mog, gave us 10 English pounds uh, on the YouTube premiere, which happens every Tuesday at 6 p.m., and Mog asks, given the time and resources to develop a game of your cho- choice, be it indie or AAA, what would it be and why? As always, appreciate the insight and entertainment. Keep up the great work. So I, th- I think it's, yeah, given the time and resources, you can just make whatever. What game would you want to wait- make? Hmm. I mean, I mean, it's probably not very ambitious, given that, you know, you've got a potential infinite budget. Um, like, uh, I'd probably do some kind of like, like my own sort of Ace Attorney ish kind of game. I'd probably do some like murder mystery detective type thing, um, but in the Ace Attorney mold. So it wouldn't need like a mega budget. Need some good sprite artists, killer composer. I'd do the uh, mystery writing. Um, yeah, I'd probably do that if left to my own devices. I would probably, if I had loads of money, I would do none of the work and I would hire, you know, the best people in the biz. I'd get on the blower to my old pal, Jed, and I'd go, Mr. Mercurio, you got a, got a popular property on your hands there with that line of duty. So let's get Kate, Steve, Ted in the booth. Let's record some lines and let's just, let's just pump out any old shite for line of duty. It'll sell. The people will love it. So that would be my just cash cow. Let's no creativity. Let's just, let's just make some money. Press to bent coppers. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much, Mog. Uh, I like the idea. I've got this image now of a select your policeman. And it's just got the three of them. And when you go over, like, Ted Hastings, it gives you one of his... Uh, Mother sort of, of God. Or, yeah, yeah I've never... or he's now he's sucking on diesel or whatever it is, yeah. he says. <laughs> uh, Bees Forever uh, gave us five American dollars on YouTube during the YouTube premiere. Thank you very much, Bees Forever. Bees Forever asked, question for Matthew. I know you like Japanese murder mysteries. Have you ever read any Miyazuki Miyabe? Miyuki Miyabe. Miyuki Miyabe, excuse me. Uh, All She Worth is my favourite one. Have you? Uh, I have. I've read that that one book, All She Was Worth. Um, I think I talked about it on the... RPS podcast actually um, it was one of my recommended things we recommend something at the end of the RPS podcast you see and I, I often recommend Japanese mystery novels because I'm irritating and smug like that um, yes uh, yeah I've only read that one I know uh, they've written a lot more than that um, that's the only one that I could get my hands on localised um or translated rather um so yes it's good it's like a murder mystery about um credit card debt which doesn't sound very exciting but it's actually quite good Mm. 
Uh, Mads got in touch Mads said Hi weak spotters Just finished the book The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle On what I'm sure Must have been a castle commendation If Sounds so right. If so Thanks Matthew I kept thinking It would make an excellent Groundhog Day video game In the style of Outer Wild Sexy Brutal Etc Maybe each Maybe play each loop As a new character With new powers Trying to build on the previous loop or maybe take the role of the puppet master remixing the loop setup and interfering to get your hapless minions to solve the mystery so my question is what novel would you most like to see adapted into video game form and how thanks for providing one of the week's absolute highlights mads thanks mads Ooh. that's difficult that's a tricky one Because like there's a lot I like a lot I read a lot of thrillers and mystery novels so like solving crimes and things in games f- fun but then I also don't like incredibly like linear linear cinematic games isn't isn't quite my cup of tea like a lot of the books I read the only way you could really do them is as like David Cage type games um, which would probably be a pain um, it's quite funny actually you mentioned Sexy Brutal because I um, talked to the author of Evan Hardcastle on Twitter occasionally. Uh, Stu Turton and he was saying you know he wrote the book and he also plays games and then he saw the Sexy Brutal which has a very similar setup which is like all these people being killed in this time loop in this in this kind of weird house um, and was like ah I can't believe it and then his next book he wrote was really like Oberdin. Um <laughs> it was like a murder mystery on a boat uh, of a similar kind of era he was like ah I can't believe it um, <laughs> So uh, uh, I, I'd like to play a game based on whatever book he writes next. <laughs> um, yeah, it's tricky, this one. Like, I don't know. It's quite hard. Well, I should have probably prepped a better answer then. I don't know. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, although, yeah, does, does he, because I was going to say something, but then does he ask, yeah, how? I don't know. Um, I, 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 I do you know what you don't get a lot of in video games is some sort of biopics or even um, kind of bastardised versions thereof because I was going to suggest The Damned United which indeed is a novel and uh, I mean the family of Brian Clough who is the, the kind of figure of the book uh, they don't didn't take too kindly to the book um, and there were lawsuits and there were this, that and the other but it's an excellent story about Brian Clough's 44 days as manager of Leeds United um, if you don't know Brian Clough is a kind of a, a big figure in football and kind of English culture I suppose um, when he was kicking about he's dead now uh, but uh, yeah very fascinating figure very fascinating story now I'm not sure how you turn it into a game well like I football think football manager, but like we, we, when you said when you said biopic, I suddenly thought there are so many sportsmen whose sports are represented in games already. You could do like a FIFA the journey or whatever it was, you know, yeah, that yeah, RPG yeah. mode. Like particularly because not that I've read them, but I've had lots of people tell me about excellent WWE autobiographies. Right? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Like, yeah, a couple, a couple of like so, a couple so- of like. Yes, who have got like real wild stories and had real like you know wild lives, and you could do that with like dropping into, you know, WWE match. You know, you play the matches as yeah. they happen, and yeah, 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 you 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 could do. There's one who is the one who was in a, like an Olympian, Kurt Angle. Yeah, apparently, he, I think he's got a book that's good. He has a book. He wrote his book very early, though. I don't know if he's. Yeah, got- I, but Nick- I swear, someone said it's like genuinely brilliant. Oh wow! Okay, um, because normally the one the wrestling book that people bring up as like the wrestling book is Mick Foley's his first one, Have a Nice Day, which is a genuinely right. very good book. But a lot of them uh, are shite enough, um, because they were they were they were written kind of. It, it's like do you know when you see, do you know when you see like just a pop star, like a 20 year old pop star and they're right, here's my book. Or even nowadays, nowadays I suppose it would be a YouTuber. And it's like, what are you doing writing a book? Get some life experience first. In, like, have <laughs> things to write about before you write the feckin' book. Um, a, lot of, a lot of wrestlers were like that. 
Kurt Angle, The Rock, The Hardy Boys, who else? The, w- the WWE released one book, I think, which was Mick Foley's Have a Nice Day. That got on the New York Times bestsellers list and was huge and whatever else. And then they just pumped them out. Just loads of them. With no, um, uh, no care for facts or anything like that. There's tons of disputed uh, yeah, stuff. I, I might be wrong. Though. I, I, you know, I'm going to find out from the friend who recommended whatever it was, what it is, so I can... I can uh, um, fill be, you in next week. I will be interested. I don't want to give people a dud recommendation. Um, we've another question here from Jonathan. It certainly is book week on the PC Gaming Week oh, spot. Uh, Jonathan starts by saying, what do you think has been the most egregious example of an otherwise great game being lobotomized for the sake of DLC? I remember quitting Oblivion back in the day due to how useless my naked horse was. Oh, and based on Matthew's recommendation, I've read all the Three Body Problem trilogy. Loved it. And the Seven Deaths of Hev- Evelyn Hardcastle. <laughs> Felt like it was written by Tequila Works, which is a good thing. So next recommendation, please. So what's, what book do you want to Pedal well, the no next Matthew. recommendation is is the next Stuart Turton book after Evelyn Hardcastle. Are you on commission? Uh, Are you getting cash? No, no. I just re- okay. I really, really rate his books, which is the the Devil in the Dark Water. Um, check that out. Really good maritime murder mystery, sort of like a kind of a imagine Sherlock Holmes if Watson had to solve the mystery on a boat with some maybe witchcraft. It's rad. Um, What's the most egregious example of a great game being lobotomized for the sake of DLC? I mean, DLC doesn't often yeah, uh, yeah, like, uh, change, the, unless it's like, a, you know, like it's, uh, you know, like the thing with Star Wars Battlefront 2, where they said the game had been, like, nuked because of uh, the loot boxes, which, right. does that count? I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of struggling with this one as well, because I find... Often DLC, I don't know, I, I can ignore it if I want. Um, it isn't, like I've never, a game yeah, has I, never I, become I, I worse. Love, like the, notor- the notorious examples recently is like a lot of people say like Assassin's Creed Odyssey has this like chronic grind in it because they want you to buy the XP booster right. microtransaction, which I guess would be a similar thing. But I didn't really, like I felt like that game had enough activities that just in the, in the natural flow of playing something kind of I was at the level I needed to be um, I don't know I, I, I see a lot of the microtransaction stuff as like it's trying to tap into people's impatience rather than I don't see the games being cynically artificially inflated but I know some people do um, that's, that's fair enough but um, yeah I, I, I haven't experienced this first hand myself yeah, I, I, I'm kind of similar. But which... I don't play a lot of, like, online things where there are maybe, you know, packs and grinding for things. As You know, mm-hmm. most of what I play is pretty self-contained single-player adventures. So, uh, I don't know. Sorry, uh, unsatisfying answer, but hopefully you like the book. And finally, Ken asks, with Outriders emptying inventories due to a bug, what is the most annoying thing you've lost? The very most annoying thing you've lost, Matthew. Well, not in outright. I haven't lost anything. No, in just no. Okay, Ken is just asking. I think take take that question how you like. What's the most annoying thing you've lost? Ooh. Um, drive, passion, <laughs> yeah, the will to live. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, I, 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 I've I had a a watch since I was a teenager um, and the strap broke on it and I've put it somewhere in my house. Oh, no. I meant to get it fixed. I cannot find that watch anywhere. Oh, that is quite annoying. Yeah, that's that's an annoying thing. So I've I've literally been wa- without a watch for about t- two or three years now. Oh, that's... That's actually very upset. Yeah, so since I plan to teenager. wear that watch. It's not, it's not a very fancy watch or anything. It's Sentimental? Nice. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's not like, you know... You know, yeah. it's not an expensive one, but I, 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 the sentimental value, and I plan to wear it my entire life, and then you know, pass it on a la Pulp Fiction. <laughs> this gold watch, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't plan to hide out my ass. I don't think it's up there. <laughs> Maybe that's where it is. <laughs> might, have to, might have to have a look. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, what's the most annoying thing I've ever lost? Um, 
I mean, I do remember, I, I basically, my entire sort of teenage years, do you remember when, like, we didn't have camera, f- like, we didn't have phones on our cameras? And, yeah. like, I felt like I, I, I got a digital camera quite early, like a shitty kind of thing. But it was, it worked. And I would take this camera absolutely everywhere from my teenage years, uh, kind of into kind of early kind of going out 18, 19, 20. And all these photographs, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographs were on a hard drive. And whilst I didn't lose the hard drive, I lost the hard drive in a sense that it just got corrupted. And that's uh, why you should that's why you should back up your files, kids. It's it's not like a the guy with like a billion pounds of Bitcoin on a hard drive. It's not quite as you're yeah, not like yeah. you know it's in a landfill site. If only the council would let you go and get your childhood memories out yes. of the landfill site. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, it is uh I think I held I held on to that hard drive for a while in hopes of trying to retrieve the memories. And then after a while I was like, who cares? <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um but yeah, so thank you very much to everyone for your questions. Uh, if you want to send in your burning questions, you can email us weekspot at rockpapershotgun.com. And that just about does it for this week's edition of the PC Gaming Week Spot. If you want more of I or Matthew or Rock Paper Shotgun... There are ways you can get more. You can follow myself and Matthew on social media. I am at Conum underscore Hearn. Matthew is at Mr. Basil underscore Pesto. You can also talk to some like-minded people on Discord. Discord.gg forward slash rock, paper, shotgun. Or if you want the video version of the PC Gaming Week Spot, head on over to YouTube.com forward slash rock, paper, shot, where you can watch the video, you can like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all of the brilliant stuff, exciting things you can do on YouTube.com. But if you'd prefer the audio version, subscribe to the PC Gaming Week Spot podcast via all of your podcasting apps, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, etc., etc. But for all of your PC Gaming needs, Head to rockpapershotgun.com. Another PC Gaming Week spot down, Matthew, as we kind of... Another one bites the dust. We crawl our way through Ma- um, through Matthew, through April. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's a twist. <laughs> I'm looking for that watch. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll see I what's... want your cheap watch. <laughs> We'll see what. Wish me luck, boys. <laughs> I'm going snorkeling. Um, <laughs> there's no point carrying on. It can't get any better than that. Uh, so now it's time for my least favorite parish show. This is parish show's bid. The listener, the viewer, adieu. Say goodbye, Matthew Castle. Goodbye. And say goodbye, Colin Mahern Sloan Guffle.